Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we come to lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted. We've come to lift up your name today, Lord. Song goes like this. You know it. Let's sing it together. I'm chasing now to you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. I'm chasing now to you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what, no matter what. I need you. I need you more, more and more. I'm chasing. I'm chasing after Say you. No matter what. No matter what I have to do. I need you. I need you more and more. more, and more. Say more and more. More and more. Father, we need you more and more. More. Oh. Let's 
last time, sing more and more. Now come on, if you want to receive more of the Lord, why don't you lift your voice wherever you are and begin to cry out for more from Jesus. We need more of you, Lord. We're crying out for more. Desperate for more. We desire more. We desire more. We desire that's our desire for more of you, Lord. Hey. Come on, wherever you may be, you can still lift those hands to heaven. As we begin to pour out your worship to him. Come on, as we begin to say something sweet to our God and our King, we love you. We extol you. We worship you. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. You are righteous. You are lovely. You are just. You are El Shaddai. You are El El Yon. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Sikinu. You are Jehovah Gabor. You are everything that I need, everything that I imagine I can find in you. Thank you for being my very present help. Come on, why don't you just move into Thanksgiving? Let's begin to think about something God has done and to begin to thank Him for it. Thank you for being my strong tower. Thank you for being my shield and my buckler. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my mother. Come on. Thank you for being my father. Just begin to pour your love on him and pour your thanksgiving. We thank you and we love you. We love you and we thank you. You're some kind of God. You're some kind of friend. You're so amazing. You're so incredible. Words can't even describe your beauty. Words can't even describe how gracious you are. Words can't describe how merciful you are. Ten thousand tongues cannot even begin to scratch the surface of how much you've given, how much you've been bestowed upon us so we give you our thanksgiving we give you our worship we give you our love and we pour it out on you this morning we pour it out on you this morning lord you're worthy to receive it you're worthy to receive it. so we lift our voices and we cry out and we tell you that we love you come on keep you just begin to tell the Lord how much you love him in the room. Come on, all over the house. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. It's a simple song. It says, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Lift it up, sing, I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Sing, we worship forever. We worship forever. We will worship forever.
my heart, with all of my soul and mind, with all of my strength. I love you always. Say with all. With all of my soul, with all of my soul, with all of my strength, with all of my strength, I commit to love you all. I love you all with all of my heart, with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my soul, and with all mind, of my strength, with all of my strength, I love you all. I love you all with all of my I love you, I love you. I love you all with all of, all of my heart. With all of my soul. With all of my strength. With all of my strength. I love you always. I love you. We give glory to God. You say glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say glory to God. Lift your hands. We cry, be glorified. Be glorified. One voice saying, be glorified. That's our design. Be glorified. Be glorified. Come on, one voice. Lift it up saying, be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Let it up sing. Be glorified. Be glorified. That's our heart's desire to see you glorified. And everything that we do, we want you to be glorified. Be glorified. In the way that we want you to be glorified. Be glorified. Take a worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. When we worship, we glorify your name. You worship. Worship the Lord. Lift your voice, sing. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Say. Be glorified. One more time, every hand lifted. Sing worship the Lord. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is worthy of worship. The Creator of all things. Worship the Lord. Your peace, worship Him. Worship One more time, Lord. worship the name of Jesus. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. I will always worship. Worship the Lord. I will always worship. Worship the Lord. I will always worship. Lift your hands and worship him. Worship the 
from the depths of your soul and of your voice and worship him. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice tonight. Holy and acceptable worship the Lord. That is our reasonable act of worship, worship him. your hands one more time. Worship the Lord right there. We worship you. It's prayer time, church. This is a special time in our worship that we get to talk to our Father one-on-one. And so wherever you are right now, whatever you're doing, I just ask you to pause and take a posture of prayer as we seek God Let's pray together. Loving Lord, we are so grateful, so thankful for your presence in our homes. Though we are apart this morning, you saw it fit to wake us up. You saw it fit for us to gather for worship in our sacred spaces in our homes. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for how you carried us this year, how we never went hungry this year, and we never wanted for anything to drink. You've provided a roof over our heads. You've given us shelter. And despite what we're experiencing outside, there's still the warmth of your presence on the inside. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we are consecrating this space that we are in. Giving you full room for your Holy Spirit's presence and power to fill us. God, right now, there is somebody who is hurting. There's someone in pain, whether it be physical or spiritual. God, we're asking you right now in the name of Jesus to do only what you can do. God, where there's brokenness, we ask that you mend it. Where there's sickness, we ask for you to heal it. Where there's a financial problem, God, we're asking you to fix it only because we know that whatever we put in your hands, we know it's already done. 
precious Lord, in this Christmas season, there are many who are lacking. Many who don't have the resources they need. And we're asking you, oh God, to make a way out of no way. We're asking you to do what only you can do. So fill us up, mind, body, and spirit. Provide for us what we need, not just what we want. Lord, we need a word from you. So we ask, oh God, that you would fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our spirits. Pour out on us. We will be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. This is me confessing. This is me admitting. This is me trying to turn around. Trying to turn around the thing that happens every year. Because this. This is where Christmas begins. Dear Christmas, it's not you, it's me. Every year you come around. And every year I hope that I'll have peace and joy and wonder. Every year I place my hope in the gifts you ask me to buy, but I still feel empty. Every year I chase after the seasonal traditions you bring, but I never catch up. Every year I organize my family gatherings that you encourage, but I still need to belong. They're all good things, I know, but they're not the best things. So maybe this is where I go back. Maybe this is where I go back to where it all really begins. It begins with a timeless story that happened in real time. It begins with a baby boy, born to a humble couple, announced by a proclamation from heavenly angels to lowly shepherds. It begins with a word that dwells among us and becomes the lamb that dies for us. You are God with us. You are God for us. And you are God refusing to abandon us. So Christmas, you're here, but I'm here too. Tired, but wide awake. Wide awake. To you. To this. To all of it. Because this. This is where Christmas begins.
That's why heaven stood still to proclaim one day an angel said quietly that soon he would bring something special to me and of all of those wonderful gifts he could bring who would imagine who could Today, I'd like to share a message with every one of you. That message is entitled, The Right Time. The Right Time. I'm going to ask you to look in your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter 4 verse 4 through 5. Now I know it sounds like a very obscure scripture to look at during the Christmas season. During, during this time we typically look and reflect on the manger scene and, and the story of Mary and Joseph, the, the journey of the wise men, the, the little shepherd boy, and, and, and the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But this morning, if you would just go with me to the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 through 5 and study with me this writing from Paul. I want us to see what Paul told the Galatians about the coming of Jesus. I want us to see what that coming means for us. I, I want us to look past the commercialism that has come to surround the Christmas season. I, I want us to see what the birth of Jesus provides for us today, 2,000 plus years later. The word of God in Galatians chapter 4 verse 5 says, When the time came to completion, God sent his son born of a woman under the law to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption, sons. I'm going to read it one more time. When the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. I want to first share with you that we must recognize that God is always on time. Have you ever experienced this? Have you ever gotten ready for a doctor's appointment? Let's say you had a doctor's appointment for 2 p.m. You get ready. You don't want to be late. You get to the office early. And at 2 p.m., you're sitting, waiting to be called back to see the doctor. Now, if you are like me and experience the same, at your doctor's office, you know that when you get there at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. can turn into 2.15. 2.15 can turn into 2.30. 2.30 
turns into 245 and you're still waiting. Eventually, you start losing your patience. You get upset. You get frustrated. It seems like the doctor is never on time. But unlike the doctor, God is always on time. God is not always on our timetable, but he always acts and he is always just right on time. Do I have a witness? Joseph can be a witness for us. He was sold into slavery and later thrown into prison. But just at the right time, God raised him up to preserve his people. Do I have another witness? Let's talk to Brother Moses. He led a few sheep around for 40 years, but just at the right time, God used him to lead his people out of slavery. Think about the Red Sea. The Israelites had their, their backs against the wall with the Red Sea in front of them and the Egyptian army right behind them. But just at the right time, God opened the Red Sea so that they could escape. Do I have one more witness? Think about the birth of Jesus. God promised his coming in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Prophets preached of the Messiah's coming for hundreds of years. There was 400 years of silence after the last Old Testament writing. But just at the right time, God sent his son into the world. Jesus was born just when we needed him. God has impeccable timing. And know that God will be on time again. Jesus said he would return once more. Living people living as though time can never end. They're living their lives here on earth like it will never end. Lots of people doubt that there's any truth to the return of Jesus. But my brothers and sisters, we have to recognize that Jesus is coming again and know that God is always on time. We don't know the day nor the hour, but he knows. And he's always on time. The second thing I want us to to, to realize this morning is that God's timing is for us. Jesus came for us. What did he come to do? Jesus came to redeem us. In our text for consideration, know that the word redeem is used as a slave term. It, it, is, it is a slave term term. It, it, and you have to understand the context. In those days for one reason or another sometimes people would willingly sell themselves into slavery. But their family could buy them back. They could redeem them from slavery and give them their freedom back. That is what Jesus has done for us little baby we think about at Christmas time. He came to die. He came to purchase our freedom from sin and hell. He purchased us and redeemed us with his blood. Not only did he come to redeem us, but he came for our adoption. Now, now I have a cousin who is adopted. And though she's adopted, her parents love her all the same, just like a child that was born to them. They raised her as their own, and she loves them 
as her own. Understand this. She has all the rights and privileges. Don't miss this. She has all the rights and privileges of a child that would have been born to them naturally. And just like my cousin, you and I, through Jesus Christ, are adopted as sons and daughters of the king. Understand, in this text, the word adoption means a son placed. And that is exactly what we are. Through Jesus, we are placed, we are adopted as sons and daughters of God. God is our Abba, our Father, or as the, as the literal meaning of Abba is Daddy. Through Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that is closer than a natural father and his son. God is our Father. Our redemption and our adoption all became possible the night that Jesus was born. At the right time, Jesus came for us. And the reality is, at the right time, Jesus is coming back again. Not coming as a baby, but coming as a triumphant king. Coming to take back his children. One of these old days, Christ is coming back to redeem his children. To take us back home to the place he's preparing for us. And for those of us who are grieving, know that those that have died in Christ, one day the clouds are going to burst and Jesus Christ will appear. And all those who have died in Christ will be raised up first and those of us who remain will be caught up together to meet them here. Oh, what a time. Oh, what excitement to come. Know that this world is not our home. And we have a Savior who has come to redeem us. Salvation is free. Salvation is a gift. But we must be willing to receive it. My brothers and sisters, as we reflect this Christmas season on the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of our risen Lord, let us not lose sight of the prize that is ahead of us. That if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We can claim home in heaven. We can claim home where the wicked can cease from troubling and the weary can be at rest. Would you pray with me? Loving Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. We know that soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. And my prayer for each and every one of us is that we will make it to the king. Help us not to lose sight.
help us to build a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. Help us to make a difference in the lives of those that we meet. Help us to share this gospel of Jesus Christ so that others would know that Christ didn't just come to redeem us in the church. He came to redeem the entire world and that there's room for everyone. Help us not to lose sight this Christmas season of our place within the family of God, knowing that we have been chosen to be heirs, joint heirs with Jesus. Sons and daughters of the king. This is our earnest prayer. In Jesus' name.